Greetings, everybody. Um, I'll be presenting a topic today on echocardiography as an aid to tracheal extubation in cardiac surgery. This study was conducted by me and my colleagues in, at Narana Institute of Cardiac Sciences in Bangalore, India. As you all know, uh, weaning failure is associated with significant morbidity and mortality, and there is increasing evidence to support the use of transthoracic echocardiography to identify the cardiac cause of weaning failure. Our study seeks to determine the sensitivity of echocardiography parameters in predicting weaning failure. We selected 390 adult patients consecutively for who were posted for elective open cardiac surgery in the period between April 2020 to September 2020. Ethical clearance was obtained prior to the start of study. However, minimally invasive surgeries, mechanical support, re-explorations, mitral valve procedures, and patients who had perioperative hemodynamic compromise or arrhythmias or VF, VF, VT were excluded from the study. Perioperative management was as per standard institutional protocol and was conducted by a blinded intensivist. Echocardiography parameters for all patients were collected by a blinded sonographer with more than five years of experience during the uh, spontaneous breathing trial. Patients were divided into three groups. Those extubated within six hours were included in the early extubation group. Those extubated more than 12 hours were, were included in the late extubation group. And patients between six and 12 hours of extubation were considered as the interim ventilation group. The echocardiography parameters that were collected were ejection fraction, region wall motion abnormalities, tricuspid annular plane excur systolic excursion, pulmonary artery systolic pressure, presence of pleural or pericardial effusions E by A, E by E prime, IVC collapsibility index, valve function, and right atrial pressure. The results are displayed below. The, the first table here the, uh, depicts the baseline variables. And it's, as you can see, there is no difference between the groups in the basic demographic profile. The second table here depicts the echocardiography parameters that we obtained in the, among the three groups. The statistical analysis was conducted by SPSS software version 23.0. Continuous variables were described as mean plus standard deviation or a median plus interquartile range if they did not follow a normal distribution. And one way ANOVA test was used to find out the association between the continuous variables. Categorical variables are represented as frequencies and percentages. Chi-square uh, chi test was used to find out the association between categorical variables. For those variables that did, did not follow a normal distribution among categorical variables, Kruskal values test was used. And a p-value less than 0 0.05 was taken as a significant value. As you can see in the from the uh, table two, for uh, ejection fraction and for E by E prime value, the values were found to be significant. Whereas for region of all motion abnormalities and pleural effusion, the interim group was found to have a significant uh, difference between uh, compared to the late, late extubation group. The sensitivity for ejection fraction and E by E prime value in predicting weaning failure was found to be 85% and 87.5% uh, respectively. But the p-values for rest of the other echocardiogram parameters that we collected was not found to be significant. So in conclusion, we can say that echocardiography helps in, uh, uh, in selecting patients that are suitable for extubation following cardiac surgery. E by E prime and ejection fraction particularly helps in predicting weaning failure. And specificity is less for uh, ejection fraction when compared to E by E prime. Hence, we recommend the use of echocardiography to predict weaning success in cardiac surgery patients. Thank you, everybody.